Hey everybody, Dave here along with Greg the Pipe Pirate. It is, I did that wrong, That's I'm the Pipe Pirate, he's the Badger Piper. Oh well, it's been a long day. And today we're here to talk Mandalorian. Season finale, season one, we're finally through it. It's taken too long for an eight episode show. It really has. But you know, life, COVID, all that stuff, blame whatever. COVID mostly. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Very sad, but uh, other other than that, I'm uh, I'm doing okay. How about yourself? I said it. I'm tired. Yeah. Had a few long here, yeah. nights this week. Daughter's not sleeping through the night very well sometimes, but sometimes she gives us twelve hours, so we're up and down with our sleep. It's just not fun. Yeah, we've been pretty lucky with uh, our son. Uh, sleeping through the night, thankfully. It's just uh, during the day, I have to kind of. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit of a challenge to make him happy. That seems to be about right, in my experience. Plus, I've been setting up also a new, well, new ish work area. cubby I was using to record from when we thought that uh, the downstairs was going to be permanently a play area for the kids and a school area and things like that has now been set up as an area where I can work on my pipes and stuff so dedicated area all the tools are necessary are right there that's nice so, likely one of these days I'll be on uh, this Pipe Life meeting, and uh, instead of smoking, I'll be working on a pipe. Yeah. Yeah, I still have mine that I need to finish up uh, cleaning for the uh, the states that I had picked up in November. Speaking of pipes, what are you smoking tonight? I'm smoking my uh, Nording Freehand. This is actually the second pipe I've ever per- uh, ever owned. My wife picked this up for me almost nine years ago on Valentine's Day. She uh, wanted to get me a uh, pipe that was interesting to look at, and she did quite well with it. Took me a little bit to kind of get used to it. It's not one that I reach for often, but uh, you know, it's a nice little shape. Uh, well, not little, it's a nice shape and uh, definitely uh, catches the eye. And uh, I am smoking, I usually have uh, a Virginia or a flake with it. Um, I, I'm with this one. I am smoking. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Navy flake. Oh yeah, sounds delicious. Mm-hmm. From uh, Stokeby. And how about you? Well, tonight I have got my near up classic, so not near as big as yours. Nice little meaty pipe to hold in the hand and uh, in it. So, the standard for all English is Dunhill 965. Not Peterson's because this was bought before the acquisition, so this is actual Dunhill, even though the recipe never changed. Nice. Yes, I have. Uh, I own a, a near up and uh, kind of a similar. It's, it's an acorn rather than uh, what you have there, but uh, definitely a uh, chunky briar, which is a, you know, a, a nice little change of pace. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to clinch this thing at all, but uh, it's still a fun pipe to smoke. Absolutely. Definitely. Oh, yeah, my hair is all crazy. I haven't had a haircut since two years ago. <laughs> I actually managed to uh, get one last weekend for my mom. I would have my mom cut my hair, but her hands have gotten shaky over the years, so I don't mm. want to lose hair. Good thing she doesn't <laughs> listen to this. That's funny that you mentioned that because she actually <laughs> cut me for the first time since I was a child, uh, uh, just like right around here, and uh, she uh, she apologized for that. Uh, I think it's just a little bit distracting with having my son there and her being excited about being a grandma. 
Oh yeah, she's normally grandma, very that's, good. Yeah, that, that's to be expected. First time grandma and all. Mm-hmm. She is first time grandma, right? Yes. Yes. I couldn't remember if you were the first or if one of your siblings had, but I was right. Okay, cool. Anyway, off of that, on to the end of the cliffhanger. Yes. Um, do we have uh, music that we're playing for the episode? Oh, we probably do if I remember to turn it on. Like I said, long day. At least I remember. At least, least I remembered, you know, to hit record. I try to be, uh, try to be there, even though I may not always be on time. Rarely there ever. There we go. It's dumb too because I was making sure the music wasn't too loud before. Well, before you got on. Yeah. So redemption. The season one part two finale and just rewatched that a couple hours ago. It was just as exciting then, even though you knew it was going to happen in my case still holds up even the third or fourth time. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't want to get too far into, uh, my thoughts on it, but, uh, uh, I, I would say it's probably my favorite episode of the season. Which is saying, saying something because uh, all the episodes were really good. Oh yeah, yeah. There wasn't a there wasn't a miss, but they went out with a bang. I mean, it's like they wanted to make sure that that they got that renewal at the at the end, even though I'm pretty sure they already had it, but wanted to guarantee it. I guess is what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. But since you've got IMBD up, DB IMDb up. Why don't you read the disappointing description and we'll go from there. Okay. Description. The Mandalorian and his allies come to know their true enemy who already knows much about them. Wow. Which uh, is not even uh, a very big part of the episode. No, that happens in the first five minutes to ten minutes of a 40-some minute episode. Yeah, there's quite a bit that uh, happens in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we finally meet Moff Gideon and get introduced to him and find out he's uh, he's pretty in tune for, for somebody that we've just met. Obviously, he's been pulling the strings this whole time. Right. And he definitely poses as a... Well, he's definitely an imposing villain for sure. Um... It's uh, interesting just because uh, he's surrounded by a lot of stormtroopers and, and cool looking ones at that, but uh, a lot of them really don't make much of, a, uh, much of a difference in the end at all, really. But, uh, but definitely uh, Moff Gideon is... I mean, the the actor, of course, you know, he's a very well seasoned actor, and I'm glad that they they went with him because he really knows how to play a, a, a good villain. Oh yeah, Giancarlo Esposito. Mm -hmm. They couldn't have cast that role any better. I wouldn't want to see anybody else in it. Yeah, it, his range is really good too because I've seen him in uh, the show Community where he was a. Uh, kind of a comedic villain for one of the episodes but you know he was doing a little bit uh sinister but uh you know there, there was one way of playing that type of villainous character where it's more uptight and uh mm -hmm. professional whereas with this and it's definitely professional but you know you get this air of menace from him and uh yeah like he's just a fantastic villain And of course, you know, the big thing is, as the title alluded to, he knows each of the characters, uh, the three that are stuck in there being uh, the Mandalorian, uh, Cara, Cara Dune, and uh, Grief Karga. Uh, but 
it it's interesting because you wonder like how does he know each of the characters like has he been following the mandalorian or uh for him to kind of know that uh he would have them with him or is there more of like uh maybe like a connection with the force And that's not a question that actually gets satisfactorily answered, I don't think. I mean, the Mando, Din Djarin, which we... This is the episode we actually learned his name, so he's not just the Mandalorian anymore. Um, he said uh, he uh, that Moff Gideon was in charge of, uh, basically, some of the things that went along during the Siege of Mandalore, and... Uh, that's how he would have known who he was because he'd have access to the records that held his family names, seeing that he was a he was a foundling. And Cardoon, that makes sense because you know Republic's drop troop shock trooper. And uh Grief, well, he made the deal with him, right? So Right. That's an obvious one. But uh, you're right. Like, how did he actually know that these three people were in when, in there? When we've, we've only just seen them for the first time. Mm -hmm. And not something that gets satisfactorily answered. But also, it's not a very big deal either because it's not all that important. Right. Oh, for sure. I was just... Uh, like, it makes you wonder if he's kind of kept his eye on the Mandalorian this whole time. Like while he's been out uh, adventuring with the child, it's very possible because I mean they've had uh, had people on Mando the entire season trying to get the get the asset or the child back. Mm -hmm. And it's a. Yeah, it's a, just uh, interesting, like uh, all all the stuff with him. At, anyway, like especially at the end when you know he reveals you know the the dark saber, you know that he has, which I knew was coming because I, I heard dark saber, dark saber, dark saber around the, the time that the episode aired, and certainly like uh, it's pretty cool to see that in uh, in person finally. Oh yeah, yeah. The but, dark the dark saber was definitely well the worst kept secret of that episode for sure and then in an episode full of uh, lots of cool things like there was that weapon that was going to be used on the on the three uh, the e were... cannon yeah mm -hmm. and uh really lots of uh I mean, this episode was like chock full of just good fights from beginning to end, too, and even uh, some comedy stuff in the beginning with the uh, bike scout troopers. Like, uh, oh yeah, you know they were definitely uh, playing uh, against the uh, the tropes of the of Star Wars. Mm hmm. For sure. And I, what's interesting too with that is I think. That might have been probably the longest we've spent any amount of time with stormtroopers. Like just focused on, you know, considering how iconic they are and how they're pretty much everywhere in in the series. Like that might be the longest stretch that we see with them and getting to know, like, kind of like the what life is like as a trooper and. Uh, you know, without even revealing who's under the mask and just the, you know, boring kind of like chatter that the two have between each other, like, uh, you know, waiting to get clearance to go in and, uh, oh, no, they just, uh, and, and just kind of like the nonchalantness of it all, like, oh, no, someone, uh, spoke out and got shot <laughs> and got killed. Yep. Yep. Gideon's been on the ground for five minutes. He's already killed 12 people. <laughs> Just to make a point. Okay, we'll wait. Probably the smart choice. Oh, very smart. 
it wasn't for the fact that the IG88, or no, not not IG88, IG11 was coming in and uh, about ready to kill them anyway. Yeah. Always love seeing that droid mm-hmm. in his two no, uh, two episodes when he's when he's doing his gunplay and stuff. It's so cool. Yeah. No, that's a a good point too. Uh, and really, that's that's why I was sad because like. Uh, they do a lot to really make you like that character in this oh, episode. He's a great character, and then we get he he gives the ultimate sacrifice, uh, sacrifices himself at the end to fulfill his programming. Which uh, there was a a great meme that would have um, <laughs> earlier in twenty twenty. There was a, a big thing where of. Uh, gender reveal parties gone wrong where like uh people will like do like a gender reveal for their baby and like accidentally cause like a like a fire uh, like a wildfire or something like there's been stories like that and uh as like a joke one of the mandalorian uh, one of the memes i saw was of the mandalorian uh with uh, ig11 at the end uh coming out of uh uh the tunnel and going like, I will now reveal the gender of the baby, and then the next shot is an explosion. Yeah, that one made a great meme. Too bad I didn't see it. Oh yeah. I'll have to see if I can find it, and I'll send it to you. But, uh, yeah, no, just, uh, you know, I mean, you know, going from, like, the comedy stuff with the bike scout troopers, which... You know, it was kind of, uh, on one hand, it, like they were pretty funny characters just with like uh, trying to do like their, their target practice and they're just completely missing the can. And even my wife, who's not much of a Star Wars fan, kind of like she paused the episode and was like, that's because they can't hit anything, right? Like from the original trilogy. And it's like, yeah, you got it. And she was like, oh, that's good. And then, uh, but then like kind of showing them kind of like, hitting the baby which was just kind of like oh that's not cool at all um is like you know they're they're not necessarily good characters but you feel like you get the sense that they're just pe- two people trying to do it, their job and stay alive and uh and then you really you could have just left it at that but i guess they they needed a reason to kind of make you not feel bad for when uh, ig oh, left yeah. takes them out Definitely, I think that was definitely what was going on there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, eight IG eighty eight just comes in, and uh, eleven just comes in. We're gonna we're gonna probably say IG eighty eight a lot this episode. Um, IG eleven comes in, cleans house, and uh, really does like a a remarkable job, just kind of be- making like a a scene and making sure that you kind of remember him. Definitely. And you also kind of, you understand why in this episode too, why um, Din Djarin isn't a, a fan of uh, droids. Although uh, he becomes kind of, well, he becomes uh, quite close to IG by the end of the episode. That he does. Although I, I do find it in, a bit interesting. And this is just one of the things that I've had issue with since the episode was originally aired. These events, to my knowledge, are taking place about five years after the um, events of Return of the Jedi. From what uh, every, uh, what Filoni and uh, them have said. But Din Djarin was attacked by battle droids from... The Clone Wars? Hmm. Some 30 to 40 years before that? I mean, it looks That's like it could, it looks like it could fit, but let's say what the the boy that plays young Din Djarin in in this episode and we've in the guy the kid we've seen throughout the flash various flashbacks. It's got to be what 
at I'd say top eleven. Mm-hmm. So Din Djarin's in his fifties. Doesn't look it. Right. So there's a little bit of a continuity issue there, in my opinion. But it's not enough to not enjoy the show. It's just one of those things that Yeah, the Clone Wars were over like decades before this happened. And yet mm-hmm. we've got battle droids. Like super battle droids. Yeah. No, it, it didn't bother me because I'm not as uh uh well as as I'm not as knowledgeable about the timeline of things other than like when the movies take place. And that's just in terms of like order of when they happen rather than like uh, oh, sure. from date to date. Oh sure. And I'm sure and I'm no I'm not as knowledgeable as other people out there. It's just one of those things I know that just from the prequels, okay. Young Anakin Skywalker, young Obi Wan Kenobi. Darth Vader is dead now. Obi Wan as an old man died earlier on. But I mean, Obi Wan in A New Hope, like four or three movies earlier, was, uh, or however many years earlier that movie was, I don't have the timeline memorized or anything like that. Um, he was an old man then. So decades had already taken enough decades from Obi Wan from the prequel trilogy. He was able to age into an old man that we we know. So it, it's just one of those things. It bugs me a little bit, but not enough to take away from the episode as as it stands. Like for somebody who's never seen any of the uh, the other stuff, and is just familiar with the uh, original movies, they they might make the click, but probably not. We'll say that time just moves and ages slower on Mandalore. Sure, that'll work. <laughs> well, you know, we'll just, uh, as fun as it is to get things right, why don't we just kind of like make up our own <laughs> ideas of what happened? And if there's anyone that's really knowledgeable, <laughs> just just get them like really angry so that we'll, we'll finally get that uh, reader email just so we, we can read about how wrong we were. That's actually what I'm going for. I'm hoping that, you know, somebody will listen to this and email us and say, you were wrong. This is how. And then we'll be going, great. Thank you for emailing because it was bugging me. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, shoot, I forgot. Oh, I can't open it now. We'll have to take care of it next time. But we had a new subscriber to the YouTube channel just recently, like this week. Ooh. And I noted, took note of it. And then forgot to look, pull it up before uh, we started recording. Because if I pull it up now, it's going to ruin the effect. So, right, we'll get you next week. Yes. And so, like the other big thing that I, I would say happens in this episode is just uh, finding out what happened to the Mandalorians after uh, uh, after Din and the child made their escape. Yeah, and changing from the pile of that Mandalorian armor in the covert, it uh, was a bunch of them that didn't make it out. Right, unfortunately. That was uh, definitely a grim thing to run into. But I must say, I would be interested in seeing the armorer again. Yes. Uh, the armor is uh, quite an awesome character. Uh, her armor design actually kind of reminds me of uh, one of the armor sets in uh, the Dark Souls series, one of my favorites. Uh, but, uh, and, you know, she did a great job of just, uh, you know, the, giving enough lore and everything, but also looking cool in that fight scene that she had. Oh, yeah, that was great. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
and even and very pretty like a, and, and the cool not to uh, the really cool thing too is just uh like the it looks like utterly brutal like with her like hitting the the stormtroopers that came to attack her like normally we're used to kind of clean wounds in star wars with like uh, lightsabers or, or blasters but no like you saw like chunks of helmet like oh yeah get, like knocked off like pretty gnarly stuff oh yeah he, that and the guy that goes right into the forge mm-hmm. r.i.p who press up for yeah, press up for that guy Well, he certainly didn't have any extra lives. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Oh, but the cool thing, too, though, also with that is just, uh, you know, she didn't seem too upset with uh, with Din. Like, it was just kind of more of like an understanding, like, you know, this was what we had to do with, uh, you know, the, for the sacrifice. You know, it was worth it to protect the child. This is the way. And, uh, you know, getting, you know, the, uh, Din getting the insignia on his armor as well. That was pretty awesome. Just a lot of little neat touches that, uh, like I, I dig that I, I think were really clever and well, not necessarily clever, just really cool to, to see done. Yeah, and then uh, trying to think if there's anything else worth of uh, you know other than like the ending part. Um, yeah, just that the ending sequence with first IG Eleven, you know, sacrificing itself nobly. Which there, there were a lot of great lines from IG Eleven this episode. From uh, you know, taking the helmet off the Mandalorian's head for the first time doing his first face reveal and uh, you know the Mandalorian being against it because no living thing has seen my face and he's like I am not a living thing to uh, it nobly going to sacrifice itself to protect uh, the child and the Mandalorian and just the, the whole conversation too about like um you know what's your what is your um you know uh what's the word like basically like uh forgetting the terms that they used but, but basically like what drives him you know there's the primary and the secondary thing yeah yep. and uh, you know the wouldn't allow itself to get captured but uh you know it would uh you know, sacrifice itself no in peace knowing that uh its mission to protect the child would go on and be kept just uh you know really thoughtful with all of that and keeping that all like being spoken in a kind of uh computer sort of way to express emotion and uh and all of that. Absolutely. And seeing uh, another thing I really like near at the end was seeing uh, him flying around with his jetpack that he just got. Mm-hmm. Which, for somebody who hasn't used one of those things since he was a child, he did fairly well. Yeah, no, that was a uh, the ending fight was definitely uh, a, a lot of fun to watch. Just from everything from you know just being flung around on, on the his little uh, you know grappling rope to finally being able to put uh, Moff Gideon's uh, Tie Fighter down. All. Uh, really dramatic especially like 
I mean, any anytime you have like one person versus a ship, like it's impressive to watch. But just the way that he was able to to take it out, like I I thoroughly think that that was a nice way to end the se- season with a you know dramatic uh, showdown. Mm-hmm. And you gotta love the way they revealed the dark saber, cutting through the shell of the down tie fighter. Yes. Right in front of those yeah. Jawa like creatures. Yeah, they booked it. <laughs> I say Jawa like there because I don't know that Jawas are anywhere other than Tatooine, and Navarro is certainly not Tatooine. Although the climate's similar, so maybe. Maybe some moved. Who knows? I imagine some would probably go out to collect things from different planets and bring them back, maybe. Yeah, overall, a fantastic episode. Packed tight with action and drama and everything you could possibly want from a season finale. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and lots of uh, lots of open thread, like lots of dangling threads for uh, future story ideas, like you know, telling the story about uh, you know the Jedi and uh, you know there might be more in common between the Jedi and the Mandalore than uh, uh, than the Ma- the Mandalorians and uh, the Mandalorian might realize. Agreed. But with all that being said, I'm going to just make a short episode tonight because, like I said, I am very tired and I just haven't been able to wake up today, and the days are basically already over. So, right. everybody, thanks for listening. You can always find us in the normal places Twitter, Instagram, uh, here on YouTube, all the places. All of them. Uh, mail, um, you know, Morse code, uh, smoke signals. Mm-hmm. And if you happen to be that one guy that wants to write in and correct us on uh, anything, please reverse to flash time at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you, especially in regards to that whole thing about the battle dro- super battle droids. Yes, absolutely. But all that being said, thank you so much for watching and listening and and all the stuff that you've been doing in whatever places. Good smokes, good TV, and have a great time. Chat with you next time. Catch you later.